All right, okay, so listen, folks, we're back again. And remember, I just want to kind of put this out there. Uh, people can watch this episode on YouTube. Mm. You know what, Devout, we aren't, you know what, we need to push this a bit more. <laughs> like, obviously, people yeah. can hear us. You know, you can get little snippets of us on Instagram. But you know what? Why not watch us on YouTube? And um, you get to see our beautiful mugs talking about movies and talking about movie news and, and whatnot. Beautiful. So listen, before we get on... Exactly. <laughs> I just want to say, uh, folks, this is episode 165. You can catch it on, obviously, wherever you get your podcast, but also check us out on YouTube. We'd really appreciate it. And we'd love uh, your comments. Just let us know uh, what you think of the show on YouTube and uh, you know, we'll respond and we will kind of love you for it. So, uh, Deval, yep. I hope you're doing well. Um, three and yeah. a half years, we're banging out another episode and we're getting close to the end of the year. We've got some big movies to come. Uh, the main big one's going to be Spider-Man, which we're going to be speaking about in uh, well, a little yeah, under a month now. I'll wait for that. Oh, man, that's going to be huge. So we can speak a little bit about the trailer uh, a little bit later on. We've got King Richard that we yep. want to speak about. We've got mm -hmm. Ghostbusters. And if we've got time, there's a movie called No Set of Movie yeah. we want to speak about. And Deval is going to be bringing us another yep. hidden gem from his hidden gem garden. So listen, keep it locked with the Flicksters. We hope you enjoyed the show. So Deval, uh, take it away, man. The one that you guys make no sudden movements and stay right there because you can actually win <laughs> Disney Plus until the end of April. We're giving away Disney Plus till the end of April. All you got to yeah. do is be a follower of the Flicksters on Instagram or Facebook or, or wherever and write a review of what you think of the Flicksters. Write that review, let us know, and we will send you that uh, yeah the, the the passwords basically the passwords and logins for Disney Plus until the end of April where you're gonna get Hawkeye you're gonna get Mandalorian uh, not Mandalorian yeah Mandalorian you're gonna get not Mandalorian you're gonna get Boba Fett and a bunch of other stuff you know on Disney Plus so yeah so that's how you win it do it and you will not be disappointed okay so quickly going to the shout it's, outs it's mad. It's, uh, first shout yeah. out goes to Emmanuel very own Emmanuel we're gonna see him soon uh, before Christmas. Uh, hopefully for the Spider-Man uh, review, we'll have to wait and see. But I know he's really looking forward to that one, as well as a bunch of other movies yeah. as well. So Emmanuel, big shout out goes to you. Uh, he was talking about King Richard. I think he's, he's actually uh, he actually watched it too and really liked it. Like if, for him to say that, because mm. he's he's a he's a hard critic, hard to please. He <laughs> hard to please, Emmanuel. Very hard like, to seriously. please, man. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his stuff, though. So he's like, you know, it's got to be really good for him to be like, yeah, yeah this is good. So, yeah. yeah, so he likes it. Uh, next shout out goes to Sifa uh, underscore Saki on Instagram. And uh, she was talking about, uh, which one was she talking about again? She was talking about, uh, I think it was Red Notice. Yeah, Red Notice. Uh, she liked it, but was a bit mm. underwhelmed by it. Didn't think The Rock and and Wonder Woman's <laughs> connection was genuine. So I'm using the, you know, other alter ego names. But yeah, she was just like, like mm, it's okay, but not too bad. And again, yeah, a lot of people seen Red Notice yeah. and they're either hot or cold about it. Let us know what you think. Uh, King yeah. Salani, go check out her page. She's got some really, really great content. Uh, and she's into her anime and all sorts as well on there. Uh, go check out Ciel Noir's uh, uh, content on Instagram. Really, really cool person. Uh, motivational, uh, all, all sorts of uh, great content on her page. If you're looking to get fit and active and stuff like that, she's a really good person to yeah, look forward to that. So yeah, to go and check out her stuff as well. So yeah, those are this week's shout outs. Brilliant. Okay, let's get into movie news now. Deval, um, this, I just want to quickly just mention this thing, right? So Scarlett Johansson, we know, obviously, you know, yeah. big Hollywood actor, and, you know, she'd been in some great movies, even away from, you know, the MCU. Yeah. But obviously, you know, she's featured on a movie news, obviously, for playing Black Widow. And Black Widow came out earlier on in the year and everything. And, you know, we, we liked it. It wasn't, you know, it, I'll be honest, it's not kind of like one of my favorite MCU movies, but it's kind of decent. You know, it kind of gives her a great send off. Now, she was um, being awarded something uh, was it? it was called she's been awarded she received the american cinematique award wow. and loads of people yeah so loads of people um you know were, were at, was at the uh, award function and um you know saying lovely things about scarlett johansson and one of the people was kevin feige now you got to remember this she sued scarlett johansson sued disney marvel whatever right because of the whole 
uh, Black Widow debacle. She wanted it on yeah. cinemas and they released it on streaming service and she's saying that she lost yeah. money and blah, blah, blah. So settled out of court for about $40, $50 million. But check this out. Um, Kevin Feige praised her. She said that he said that she's a talent. She's got vision, intelligence. She's savvy, both as an actress and a mm. producer. But check this out. He admitted, I'm trying to get to the actual <laughs> bit, but uh, long story short, she's working on a new Marvel s top secret Marvel project away from. Is it what, as an actress or a producer? We don't know. Well, this mm. is it. So I think it's going to be producing and acting in some sort of mm. capacity. And I'm like, maybe they're giving her a movie okay. to direct. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. Yeah, that could be a point actually, behind the camera. Mm. Maybe Disney Disney Plus show, maybe something. Who knows? Okay. Exactly. And I was just like, so this is what he said. Uh, so this is what the blurb says. It says, um, it says a top secret Marvel Studios project on which he's reteaming with uh, Scarlett Johansson. And he's he's come out and, and he said it has nothing to do with mm. uh, her Black Widow character, Natasha Romanoff. Um, so make well, that what you will. So maybe this is, I don't know, beyond... I don't know how you can see someone or an organization is... and then still get back into bed with them afterwards. It's like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's mad, isn't it? Oh, this is, man whatever man seriously she's like they must love her to bits so that's interesting so obviously we'll obviously keep an eye on that one and maybe it could be later on in phase four or phase five whatever it is we'll keep an eye we keep an eye on that one now the other thing is uh i'm not sure if you caught this but deval uh tom holland he's obviously promoting you know mm. spider-man and you know getting uh interview questions left right and center but apparently he's turned around and he's and he said he can't imagine, um, he, he couldn't see himself being 30 years old and still playing the character of Spider-Man. If they offer him 50 million pounds, I'm sure so, he will imagine himself doing it. <laughs> and, uh, you know. <laughs> exactly. I think he's he's young, man. He's like, what, mid-20s yeah, or something? Yeah, like 24 early 20s, or something. He? I think he's quite young, 25 maybe, tops. But, uh, yeah, he's quite young. He still looks quite young, still quite agile. I remember he had a, his early life was in uh, ballet and theatre. He played uh, uh, Billy Elliot mm. on stage. So he's very, he can do cartwheels right. and backflips. I think he's in, in his audition for Spider-Man, he did an actual backflip. So he's very agile. So even when he gets to 30, he might not be yeah. a typical 30 year old. He might still be very, you know, very, yeah. very about it. So. Yeah, exactly. So he started that role. So he got the role when he was 19 years old. But this is what he had to say. He says, I have to take Peter Parker into account as well because he is an important mm. part of my life. If I'm playing Spider-Man after I'm 30, I've done something wrong. So is, a lot of people are saying this could be the uh, end. This could be, I doubt it though, I doubt it. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure he signed up for one more though, hasn't he? I one more so, appearance yeah, of Spider-Man. So. But sometimes, you know, also the, 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 he might still appear as Spider-Man, but, but not be in a Spider-Man film. He might be giving advice to Miles Morales, mm. who's younger. He might be a mentor type situation, yes. like how Iron Man was. He might not be having to jump around too much. It could be a different situation. So he's talking too soon. Maybe that quote is out of context. I don't know, yeah. but I think if they offer him the money, he's not turning it down. Come on now. Nah, come on, man. If he's getting Robert yeah. Downey Jr. money, for, remember him in yeah. Spider-Man 2, like 50 mil for yeah. 10 minutes work or something. Uh, all right, okay, let's now, let's check out mm. Blade. Devout, I haven't heard much about Blade. We know that it's definitely going to be coming. Wesley Snipes has been uh, kind of like on social media and he's yeah, given his yeah, blessings. Yeah. Although I always find that kind of like uh, strange when kind of like actors give like their blessings. I mean, why, like, why like, do they need to like, give blessings? Like Maharaja like Ali was like waiting to think, okay, is he going to bless me? He's going to, oh yes, he's okay. Wesley Snipes. Oh, okay, guys. <laughs> Let's go forward with it. Oh, God, God, Jim, I've, got, I've got blessings for Wesley Snipes. Like, now I can do the role. It's like, screw that, right? But um, we know... Well, we think we ha we've seen a bit of Blade or heard a bit of Blade in uh, yeah. at the end of Eternals. That's kind of like, you know, what the rumor is. And if that is the case, then it's a great little kind of segue into it. But check this out. Um, Delroy Lindo, who I think is having a bit of a yeah, resurgence he's about. Uh, he was in, in uh, you know, yeah, yeah, The Five Bloods. And um, we saw him yeah. in The Heart of Day Four. He was actually born in the UK. He's British born, South East We know London, someone right? else with the surname yes, Lindo. He's over. also born in the UK. I wonder if they've got a... Any, with, with any uh, correlation? The and they both got big, ugly eyes, yeah, and that was they're both tall. <laughs> big heads. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the big, big heads. 
They both got big heads. Yeah, maybe they've got a connection there. <laughs> We're going to yeah. find out for you. Um, check this out. He's been cast uh, in Blade, so I don't know exactly what role he's going to be playing, but Delroy Lindo is going to be in the MCU. Yeah, I can see that, you know. I can see that. Maybe he might be Blade's dad. He's a great he actor. Blade's dad or something like that. You never know. Yes. Or his, his old mentor. Because Blade's actually... Because you know, Chris Christopherson mentoring Wesley Snipes' character. He might be in um, Mahershala Ali's character? version. Oh, man. <laughs> Very yeah. cool. Hey, oh, man. And listen, look, I mean, maybe. What about if they go back old school mm. through the comics? Oh. Blade was born in oh, England. Okay. Yes, of course. Because yeah, in the comics, he had, he had an English accent. In the, yeah, in the, yes. Not in the comics, but <laughs> you know what I mean. In the comics, he was English. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. He was English, yeah, exactly. So oh. you never know. Uh, but anyway, there's that. And Deval, okay, I'm gonna pick your brains on this okay, one. Okay, pick it. All right, now this is mm -hmm. just a rumor. Pick, pick your brain a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hugh Jackman, hey, Wolverine, bub. MCU. <laughs> hey, bub, what do you Man. reckon? The rumor is, there's a rumor going around. People are saying that in mm. the multiverse of madness, there could be a mm. version of Wolverine and that Wolverine is we could see basically Hugh Jackman come back as playing Wolverine eight, not like in a eight, big role that happens and, but just uh, and you know what 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 I, come on I come on I want to hear you if that's something that thoughts, can happen man. a little snippet role or something he might come back for that because it, yeah. it can actually it doesn't rubbish the ending of Logan because Logan happened they haven't they haven't yeah. totally undone it but in my head, when you talk about yeah. multiverse Wolverines, do you know who else I can see playing Wolverine? This is a, this is very, very, like, who? mad. But I can see it happening, you know? I can see it happening. He'll be a bad-ass version of Wolverine. <laughs> Mate, yes, Michael see? Jai White. Can you imagine White. him as Wolverine? Like a different, <sighs> different... He's... Because he's older, yes. he's like he's tough. I, I can see it. Imagine the claws coming out of him and him doing all kinds of moves. I don't know what I just had a, a vision of him being Wolverine, a next version. You know, this. But, you know what? I've seen these mock-ups yeah. of like people, like you know, I can't remember. There was like one. I was like, shit, actually, that was a really good Wolverine. That's, yeah, I yeah. never even thought of Michael Michael J. He'll, White, right? He's man. He, this guy a, has done. Yeah, he's done yeah. comic book. Yeah, he's done comic he's, book he's before. Spawn, movies. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. He's done martial arts movies, yeah. Spawn, yeah. He's, he's done movies, man. This guy's but been he, around. He but, does. I mean, um, it's exciting, yeah, obviously, exactly. for the fans. If he comes back as Wolverine, to see... that's a cash, like, print your own money. People see yeah. him as Wolverine because he's done it so well. 20 years, you know what I mean? So, yeah, he's he's a, he's, yeah. he's the one. Yeah. Like, 17 years. Exactly. That's the rumor. Go check it out. Read up on it, folks, and let us know what you think. Do you think it's BS? Do you think it's just kind of, like, mm. wishful thinking? You know, obviously they're going to pay oh, yeah. Hugh Jackman huge amounts of money to do something if it's like for about five minutes. Say huge you know. or huge amounts of money. Huge, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Huge <laughs> amount of money. Um, right, I'm not sure if you heard about this, Deval. Vin Diesel, uh, and you know, oh, obviously we've spoken about it on the show. Vin Diesel guys. and Rock have had this kind of you know feud. I know these guys are back again in our show, but check this out. <laughs> this is so weird. Vin Diesel apparently has made an emotional uh, plea to The Rock to come back to the franchise. And I was like, what? This is just like, this is crazy. So this is what he, he took to Instagram recently. And this is what Vin Diesel wrote. He said, my little brother, Dwayne, the time has come. The world awaits the finale of Fast 10. As you know, my children refer to you as Uncle Dwayne in my house. There is not a holiday that goes by that they say that, you know, by that they, and they, what, and actually, I don't get this. There is not a holiday that goes by that they and you don't send well wishes, but the time has come. Legacy I don't awaits. Think, I don't think The Rock read that because as soon as he started off with my little brother, The Rock is thinking, who are you calling little brother? I'm not little. <laughs> He probably might have taken that the wrong way. Yeah. Exactly. I'm the big brother. Oh, no, man. Um, but what do you reckon? Do you reckon, what is this? Do you reckon this is a stunt? This is a ploy or uh, what? No, or... it could be genuine, but I think money's talking there. There's, there's money to be made there with that union. And I think if yeah. like, one of them has seen that, okay, just, just to bury the hatchet, I'm going to make an extra 50 million pounds or whatever it is, dollars. I'll bury any hatchet for that amount of money. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's so true, man. It's so true. It's so true. 
But I mean, it just shows you, like, you know, star power. Obviously, the movie will do even more with, uh, you know, The Rock mm. in it. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I mean, the ball's in The Rock's court, right? It is. Yeah. The, the Rock. The The Rock has the ball. He has the the control. It's whether he wants to. It's two big balls, probably. <laughs> it's whether he wants to. You know, he he doesn't mind taking a hit. He's making money elsewhere. We've seen he's got multiple streams of income and all sorts of places. Because he is the most electrifying person yeah. in all I love, love that we go, oh. is, Most electrifying person <laughs> in all entertainment. And, hmm. and, he's doing, and he's doing Hobbs and Shaw, which is connected yeah, to that yeah, universe anyway. Yeah. So, um, so we're going to be there. All right, listen, look, let's, let's kind of uh, finish mm. off with this. Ridley Scott speaks out. Now, um, people will know, obviously, the name of Ridley Scott. He's directed the Alien franchise, which is you know that's he's been making those movies since the 1970s mm. he's a great he's a great film director i love some of his movies outside of the alien franchises um magic men which is a good one gladiator mm. which is a big one which they're talking about doing no sequel to that but check this out he was being interviewed he's coming out with a movie uh called the house of gucci oh, that his film? i've heard some great stuff about that i didn't realize that's that. his okay. film yeah so lady gaga and uh, oh, uh adam shit. driver Do you know what? at some point is that lady gaga Oh my, I'm so stupid. Yes. I didn't know. I didn't know that was her. Yeah, I did Lady not know Gaga. that was her. I didn't know who it was, but I didn't know it was her. Oh my yeah. gosh. And apparently the, the reviews are, I mean, the, the first word in saying that it's like, it's really good and everything. So at some point yeah, we'll catch it. Week. But he was being interviewed. Yeah, yeah. He was being interviewed and um, he basically turned around and said that superhero movies are shit. Mm. He basically, the words he used were, uh, and obviously, you know, this is going to be foul language here, but he said superhero movies are fucking boring as shit. Well, that's his opinion. He's, he's entitled to his opinion, but most exactly. people would disagree. Yes. You know, so a lot of people. It's, it's because of how, of who he is in the film industry that his words carry weight. Yeah. But he seems like a bit of a miserable guy to me. So <laughs> it looks like he doesn't. <laughs> Have you seen his interviews? So I'm not surprised he thinks that. So it doesn't, really, doesn't really bother me what he says, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, it's not. It doesn't. Was what shit, he says. So. Won't aff- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So what he says no, won't no, affect no, the no. box office. It won't affect obviously Marvel no. making movies. But it's just, I don't know, kind of attention grabbing. Obviously, you know, you know, uh, a mm. respected film mm. director says that these mm. types of movies are shit. Well, okay, fine. People have said that about all the time. But anyway, um, that's your movie news, folks. Um, keep it locked with the flicksters. We're going to be bringing you more movie news. In the meantime. Let's check out new on streaming, and I've got to mention these two. So they're from Netflix. We'll quickly run through these. I actually haven't seen these, but we wouldn't be the Flicksters if we weren't kind of, you know, yeah. bringing these out there. But there's two shows, Cowboy Bebop, Deval, which is based on a Japanese anime, and uh, and, and that anime, the, the anime version of this is, is like oh, yeah. well-loved, yeah. well-respected. It's got like... If, like if you check out the IMDb score and everything, it's like kind of like crazy high. So what Netflix did was they bought the rights. They've um, turned this into a live action, and it stars um, uh, Hen- no Cho. Uh, oh, the one from uh, Cho. Oh, what's his name? No, the one from, from um, yeah, Mill <laughs> Mill. And he was in that good film. That That's good how film I remember, watched, isn't it? Uh, the- Searching, Searching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember? Well, his name's Cho, so that's his surname, Cho. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. So basically, I, I mean, a lot of people are talking about it, and the reason why people are talking about it is because of the yeah. anime. So, you know what? It's it's out there on Netflix, and Deval, you and I, at some point, we'll yeah, try and watch I, this, I right? haven't really watched the anime, but I know it's based in the future, 2071, some sort of space, uh, galactic, sort of cowboyish uh, adventures. Think of, like, Guardians of the Galaxy. Think of uh ulysses think of uh i don't know think of uh mm. what's that one in space uh oh, damn i can't remember now but yeah space uh you know drama basically space adventures uh so that's what it's all about but yeah it seems, it seems interesting it might be good might not be good we'll have to find out yeah exactly we'll have to find out we'll watch that one cowboys in space and if you do see it obviously folks yeah. let us know cowboys in space and the other one tiger yeah. king season two now i remember i watched this back in uh, 2019 and it was kind of like <laughs> the, mm. the, the guy um yeah. joe no, exotic was, was this was doing, larger like, the than life character of, uh, coronavirus sort of uh that was it sorry 2020 yeah so now the makers that 
yeah, the, the makers, mm. they've kind of come back and um, he apparently he's in he's yeah. in jail, but he's got cancer now. Shit, okay. He's got cancer and I think he's been, he hasn't been given long wow. to live. So, you know, the, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what else they can mm -hmm. say about this whole kind of thing. He still maintains mm -hmm. his innocence, but he got convicted of like attempted murder and or, yeah. you know, um, I can't remember what exactly what it was shit. by the end of the show. Oh I can't gosh. remember. Very yeah. controversial, but very, but, very yeah. much addictive. Addictive madness. Yeah, yeah. Got to watch that show if mm. you haven't seen it. So that's Tiger King season two. That's already out there. And um, so that's your new yep. for streaming. Now, big trailer. trailers. Big, big trailer. Now, Devel, you haven't. I refuse did you see to this see it, or not? I have seen snippets because it is on our, on our YouTube page. Yes. I, did, I did put it on there. I have yep. seen snippets because it's hard to really avoid. I haven't watched any breakdown videos of it. But have you, have you seen it? No. You haven't seen it? But you have. I've seen it. I okay. haven't seen the breakdown I seen, videos. Yeah, so I, I just. I, well, from. But I'm not yeah, going to. Doesn't say what I know so far is that uh, it reveals that other Spider Man or Spider Men might be involved. It reveals, I think, Jamie Fox. I think has been shown in it, uh, and it just reveals that a lot of the uh, what they call again, you know, the other Spider Men villains. What are they called again? The uh, not Sinister Six. Yeah, Sinister the Six sinister? or something like that. Uh, they are they're involved. That like, it really shows them a bit more. Also, a bit, a bit more Doctor Strange. It just it just shows a lot more, and I think there's some sort of clip yeah. of uh, Mary Jane, uh, MJ sort of falling or something, which kind of is a is a hint at you know when Gwen Stacy fell and stuff. You see, people just throw information at me. I don't want it. I don't want the information, but somehow it's come my way. I know. I know. <sighs> but all I'm going to say is no, uh, no. Some of that <laughs> okay, some of that good. isn't right. <laughs> so, yeah. So the Spider Man, okay, okay. no. Mm. So none of that. Which is what yeah. people want, right? They they want to see that, but you know what? We're, they're mm. teasing us. They obviously like you know really really teasing us with that one, so you don't get to see that. And with in terms of the villains, yeah, you just get to see kind of mm. like a few okay. like snippets, okay. nothing major. But there's a rumor going around yeah. online that Marvel have specifically they've erased yeah. certain things. Yeah, certain they did that things. Infinity War. Remember they saw they, they showed the the, the Hulk running towards the screen and all that. We've got no Hulk in Infinity War. They do this all the time, so I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm they not do surprised. It. Exactly. So, um, we, listen, just just kind of like, you know, uh, we, we need to kind of uh, manage our expectations because there is mm. obviously talk of, you know, the you know different Spider-Man yeah. being in there. But what about if in the end, it's like it was just going to be about the villains and this you know, uh, Tom Holland, uh, yeah. Peter Parker. It could be a really small portion of the film, and the film, the rest of the film, could be some other villain, of or something else in, yeah. entirely. So we just don't know. But on on, on December the fifteenth, we we're about know. to find out in IMAX. Exactly. I know, man. I can't wait. I think tickets go on sale like the 29th of November, so maybe oh, next week or something. Tickets straight away, front seats. Oh, mate. I know, man. Yeah. So it's going to be fifteenth for you, and then it's going to be the sixteenth okay, for us. Okay. So that might, I think it might be the fifteenth, as in like a minute after midnight. So it might be the the fifteenth day, but it'll probably come out. I reckon yes. in the same. Well, we'll see anyway. But either way, yeah, I'm there for the first screening. I'm there. Ah, oh, tell me about it. Tell me about it, man. I can't wait for that one. All right, okay. Let's check out Anniversary Corner. Now, this movie we've chosen because obviously it's got a connection to one of the main movies that we're going to be speaking about. And this movie is from 10 years ago, 2011. And um, uh, Matt, again, this for me, this was a movie was like a knockout, you know, piece of it was it's yeah. drama. It's got like basically the highs and lows of of man, what it means to be what it means to win, what it means to lose. Like, you know, this huge journey. So it's Will Smith in the pursuit of happiness. And um, man, what a great performance. But also yeah. his son, his real the kid, son. man, yeah, was great son. in that movie as well. Real son, mm. great movie. So yeah, what do you remember from this movie? Nothing, because I still ain't seen it. <laughs> oh, I should admit that in man. public. You gotta watch it's it. It's not the first thing I've admitted in public this week that I just can't be. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I admitted in public. I had a, a presentation I had to do at work in front of 150 people, and someone in the crowd asked me, "Do you watch EastEnders?" I said, "Yeah, I do." <laughs> <laughs> it was in context, but I'd never been asked that in public, and I was just like, "Yeah, I do." <laughs> EastEnders, for anyone who doesn't know, is like a UK TV show 
That is just. But but tell everyone how long has it been going since on the for? 80s, and I've, I watch it all the time still. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our version of like a really it's low, for years. like it's really like a uh, working class uh, Sunset Beach or yeah. Days of Our Lives or something, but <laughs> like really working class, you yes. know? Yeah. <laughs> Like a proper slice yeah. of UK <laughs> life, like you know that show exactly. kind of like encapsulates it, and um, it's Arthur. No, Daly's doing it. <laughs> oh, oh shit! You, like, you know, what about oh, Ethel? I always ask ages, you this. Man. Forget it. <laughs> I know, Forget I know it. exactly. All right, so listen, look. If you haven't seen Great Pursuit of Happiness, hit, go man. go Eight out and check it out. IMDb. Yeah, it's a good done movie. Really well, uh, like you, 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 you set it up really well. I think if anyone hasn't seen it, like me, I, I should. I should have, I should have seen this actually, but I just I don't know why I still haven't. But it's it, yeah. it's a it's a no, journey of someone who's trying to basically find happiness. He's a salesman. He's he's had ups and downs. They're sleeping in train stations. They're sleeping in cars under bridges yeah. with his son, washing himself exactly, in toilets. Doing all this stuff to try and find that happiness and be someone. And uh, it's a great film from what I hear. I got to do my job and go and see it. But yeah, ten years ago, no, yeah, hold on, fifteen definitely. years. Yeah, he was ago. nominated. That's twenty two thousand and six. Sandy Newton's in it, who looks the same. She hasn't aged in in, in yeah. all those in all those years. I'm sure she's a vampire. Yeah, she looks she's crazy. Honestly, she is. <laughs> she's crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And like you know, and if you, if you're thinking about okay, yeah, there's obviously ups and downs in it, but it's got this great kind of character journey, and there is kind of like it, it does end on a on a high note. So uh, and a lot of people were kind of like, oh, it, it's too kind of like ends on too much of a high note, but it's based on a real life story mm. about this guy, um, and it's you know his story and everything. So read up on about it. It's a great movie. Will Smith's really really good in it, and <clears throat> it kind of. I mean, I, I, I mean, what would you say about Will Smith? His kind of like career trajectory. It's, it's been like, you know, he's had some low points mm. and he's had some really high points. And for me, Pursuit of Happiness yeah. is one. But would you say this be King Arthur, not Richard. King Arthur, King Richard is one of his high points? Yeah, he's, 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 his career has been a bit like Ethereum or Bitcoin. When you tr- chart the, it's like it can go really <laughs> high, it can crash. It can go really, it's like that, you know, but you've still got your investment at the end of the day, you know. Which he is. He's a good, yeah. he's a good actor, and uh, I'll talk more about King Richard in a second. But yeah, I mean, the thing about Will Smith is that before sometimes you see the character, you see Will Smith. Sometimes he yeah. is more than the character. So sometimes it depends on what kind of role he's doing. You either bought into it, or you just think, oh, this is Will Smith. You know, so Fresh Prince days yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it can kind of work each way. But I think in, in this one, from what I've heard, Pursuit of Happiness and King Richard. He he is not Will Smith. He's the he's the character. Yeah, he embodies the character. He was going to be Neo. I'm glad he wasn't Neo because that would have been Will Smith Nino. rather than yeah. You know, that would have <laughs> been, been a mistake, Smith, right? Yeah, exactly. He, he even said he no admit, to it, yeah. and he regrets no, that he admitted, decision. I think he, he regretted it at first, but he admitted that it's it a good thing he didn't do it because how how good it turned out. Mm. He, oh, that wouldn't that wouldn't have worked. Can you yeah, imagine him yeah, exactly. dodging bullets? He would have given it given the Harlem Shake. Dodging them bullets, <laughs> the <laughs> jokes everywhere and everything. <laughs> Can you imagine? Jazz would have been one of the one of the agents. Be like, oh my gosh, man! <laughs> you know, <laughs> Jazzy Jeff, man. Um, all right, listen, look, let's yeah. get into our film reviews. And look, I want to I want to mention this one movie. Yep. I'm not going to spend too much uh, on it, but this movie is called No Sudden Move. And um, I read uh, something mm. about this kind of like a while back, and I was like, oh, this sounds really good. It's directed by yeah. Steven Soderbergh. And it's got oh. Don Cheadle, it's got Benicio oh, Del collector. Toro, Hi. it's got a uh, yeah, great, seriously, this cast list is brilliant. So uh, Don Cheadle, Benicio Del Toro, uh, David Harbour, a.k.a. Um, mm. Hellboy, it's got mm. Ray Liotta, it's got Brendan Fraser what? from Damn. The Mummy. Brendan Fraser, it's got... Um, well, actually, no, I'm not going to spoil the big, the the other big kind of okay. cameo in this one, but it's directed by Steven Sp- Soderbergh. And if you can think back to see Steven Soderbergh, the actors that he's worked mm. with are when it when it's come to the Ocean's Eleven movies. Traffic. Think about th- traffic. Think about those mo- Think about those movies. And there's a cameo mm. in this movie, and the character is like, yeah, he's you know, it's really good. It comes at a really good point. But basically, it's set in 1954 okay. in Detroit. And that setting is really important because, Motor I mean, City, I didn't know yeah, this. Detroit, um, there was like lots of uh, indust- industrial Detroit. factories and stuff. And then there was, there was some sort of crash where things didn't work out and people were desolate and stuff. And 
is it? Yeah. Well, exactly. So in the 50s, well, this is the mm -hmm. automobile industry in America where huge mm -hmm. car makers are so Ford, GM, yeah. Chrysler, and a few others. They yeah. were kind of there, right? So that whole setting is really, really important. The fact that it's set in uh, Detroit and it's set in the 1950s because that plays a part in in the kind of the ending of the movie as well so don Cheadle, he's a he's a you know he's a he's basically a crook uh he you know he's done uh jobs he gets hired for this one job uh and he's teamed up with benicio del toro and what they have to do is they have to babysit someone in their house Okay, whilst um, their third, whilst the third person in this kind of little, uh, mm. you know, this trio of, uh, of, of, you know, hitmen, they basically goes off, uh, you know, takes David Harbour and says, listen, we need you to go to the bank to get the document. If you don't come back within half an hour, we're going to shoot your family. Yeah. So it sets, it's kind of set in this kind of like little, you know, um, time frame where, there's, there's, there's something edgy, something different going on, and they're after a piece of document. That document is super important because it contains some information, and it's not just Don Cheeto who wants it, it's people above Don Cheeto who want it, and it's people above those yeah. people who want that information because it's worth a lot okay. of money. So Don Cheeto, Benicio Del Toro, they basically steal <laughs> the document, they then go to the next person above, then they go to the next person above that, and there's a lot of money involved. There's cr double crossings, there's triple crossings, there's murders, there's a f great soundtrack in this movie. Yeah. And uh, I tell you what, man, I, was, I wasn't okay. expecting much, but you know what? I was hooked, I was gripped all the way through. And um, it's got the mobsters, it's got obviously crooks in there, it's got Bill Duke oh, shit. from- I'm going to have from, some fun. I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to have some fun. <laughs> he, plays, he plays like a gangster in this movie, man, and he's brilliant. He literally is mm. a gangster playing a gangster. I'll tell you what, it's a good movie, man. Brilliant star cast and the production set mm. in 1950s, the way that they dress, the way that they speak. Oh, man, it's definitely, it should be on okay. your watch list. Uh, you can check it out on HBO Max if you're mm. in North America and in the UK, probably on Sky Atlantic yeah. or something like that, Now TV. And at some point, I'm pretty sure it's going to come out on Amazon Prime or, or whatever. But if you can catch it, watch it. You'll enjoy it. Uh, it's called No yeah, Sudden okay. Move. So they should make a move to watch Devout. that. Oh, definitely, okay. definitely. All right, okay, next up on the list, we've already mentioned this movie. So uh, Deval, he went out yeah. and watched this. It's called King Richard, brand new movie. Deval, set it up for us, uh, and what did you make of the yes, movie? I'll, I'll, I'll go back and wind back to when we, we broke the news uh, on the show, saying that Will Smith was going to play, you know, Richard Williams, yeah. and I was like, Will Smith, Richard, like, he looks nothing, looks what? nothing like Will him. Smith. I was a bit like, mm, Will Smith. I've got to take that back, make a formal apology in public, and say I was wrong. Yes, he doesn't look like him, wow. but he became him in the movie. So this movie is about Richard Williams, who's the father of Serena and Venus Williams, along as he's got other daughters, there are five daughters all together with, uh, with his wife. Also, I didn't know, but he's got other kids as well. <laughs> he's got other kids apart from his five daughters. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, so it's about his journey and their journey into, be into making the Williams sisters the, the best tennis players you know, of all time. Uh, and the way he trains them, the way he guides them, the way he mentors them, he's really tough with them, uh, with all the people in the family. They're really regimented. They have to, you know, do their homework. They have to do this and that, chores. Uh, the, the way they train, uh, the way he trains his daughters in, uh, in Compton, in, in, Cal in California, which is quite a tough area. Uh, lots of gangster shit that happens around there back in the, the 80s and stuff, which which we see in the film, he gets beat up a couple of times, the dad does. Um, but yeah, he, they, they're training at night, they're training in the rain. He, 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 he uses these wow. methods to try and train them because he believes that they are unique and different and that the, the technique they have isn't the same as everyone's, but their technique will be the winning technique. You know, uh, he does have, he's, he's an athlete himself, as in like he, he's, 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 uh, he's athletic, 
So he, he believes that his, these two daughters yeah. have got the athletic gene in them and they can go ahead and obviously be excellent yeah. tennis players. And he said they, cho- he, they chose tennis yeah. because there's no one like them in the tennis game. Tennis is predominantly white, predominantly from a sort of middle class, yeah. upper class backgrounds and so on. And you don't really get kids from the ghetto playing tennis. It's usually basketball, football, no. whatever, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, it just shows how his it's, it's called King Richard because really he's he's the driving force in the movie. He wrote a a plan for the daughters before they were born. That's what he says. I don't know how true it is, wow. but he wrote a plan for their lives yeah. as to how they're going to be successful before they were born. <laughs> he's, he's a talker as well. Don't get me wrong. He's Damn. a talker. He's like, you know, he's, oh, he's okay. a talker, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he, I guess he's backed that up. So people can say what they want to say. But, uh, yeah, he's exactly. But yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, it's a really, Will Smith, he is good in this film. He's, he's convincing. He plays the dad. Sometimes the dad's a bit of a dickhead. He's stubborn. But, you know, you win, winners and people that are regimented in how they train and, you know, and, and operate, there's a certain regimentedness about them. And he, he translates that to the daughters as well. And his wife, sometimes they have friction over what they agree with and stuff. But it's just a good, yeah. the, way they, the way the daughters as well, I don't know who these actresses are, but they are really good. One, the ones that play Venus and Serena, they wow. look like them. And when you see the young, the young pictures of Venus and, Venus and Serena when they were like obviously younger, they look like them as well. The mannerisms, the hairstyles. Yeah. This, you know what? It was a good film. I can't, I can't really think of, there's wow. nothing I can really spoil about it. We all know the journey. You know, they, they trained and they played yeah. and there's certain things that happened in this that I didn't really know that happened. Like he didn't, he didn't put uh, Venus, who was a, was a bit older than Syria, he didn't put her in a lot of uh, junior competitions because he wanted her to train, 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 train and then just go pro. Uh, and it sort of, sort of shows wow. that that was co- that was conflict in the family. Big big decision. She didn't play a competitive game for three years when she was younger, which was a bit crazy. Uh, also surprising, some of the cast: John Bernthal was that his name? The Punisher. I, I just pronounced it wrong. Yeah, yeah. He is in the film. Uh, yeah, John Bernthal. He's in the film uh, as the coach, tennis coach, uh, Rick Macy. And I had no idea he was in the film because I only saw the trailer mm-hmm. once ages ago. I avoided the trailers. So he's yeah, even yeah, his yeah. voice is different in this film. He done a good wow. job. Yeah, but he's, he's a good actor, actor man. But do, do you know what? This film is. If you've got kids, uh, even if you don't have kids, but if you've got kids especially, this is a film to take your kids to go and see because it shows them dedication. Oh. It shows them hard work. It shows them sometimes when a parent is That's tough good. on the kids, that it does work out. And a parent isn't being tough just to be yeah. a dickhead. The parents being tough because they want you to succeed. This is the ideal Absolutely. film to go and take your kids, to go and like absorb some of the, the life lessons. There, there was a, a bit in the car where he was taking them back after a match and Venus won. She like won the tournament and they were all like in the car bragging, oh, you were so good, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, no, we don't, we don't brag. We're humble, we're humble. Like you never brag. I don't care what happens after, yeah. after the game. You don't brag about it. And they were still bragging and he sent them to the shop. He stopped the car, said, go and buy me, but go and buy this in the shop. And then he drove off. And the mum was like, what are you doing? You're leaving my kids in the shop. And yet they're being, they're being arrogant. They can walk three miles home. <laughs> he was, that is, that's, he life, was that's mad facts, about man, teaching seriously, them yeah. life lessons, being humble, all that kind of thing. So, I'm not going to talk anymore. This is a film worth watching. 7.5 yeah. on IMDb. I'll probably no, give definitely. it an eight. Uh, this sort of film, I reckon, is Oscar worthy. Whether it actually gets you know to that level, I don't know. But yeah, this is a film worth watching. So go yeah. and watch it. Is all I can say. Okay, man. Yeah, definitely. It's it's. Not, I mean, I'm yeah. got to watch it. I mean, like you know, yeah. I've got kids, so and it's, it's one of those things. Yeah, I've I got think to... you definitely take your kids, man. I know you're probably quite young yeah. when they get it, but at some stage, even if they you have to wait a few years and show it to them later, do that exactly. Until they get... But it's endorsed by Venus and Serena. They're producers in the film as well, so it's endorsed by them. Beyonce does a soundtrack at the end. At the end of the film, you see all these images, these statements that, that are, okay. are truth. It's a good film, man. Go see it. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and folks, if you do see the movie as well, let us know on our Instagram page. Let us know what you think. Um, and we'll obviously speak about it on next week's episode. All right. Now, yeah. the uh, other movie that we're going to speak about is Ghostbusters yeah. Afterlife. And um, 
so devout just remind everyone again there was they did do a reboot yeah, the didn't female they? One. not too long yeah. ago maybe about two three years yeah, the ago female one. a few years ago that one didn't go down so well uh this one's ghostbusters no. afterlife i won't talk about it too much uh but i will quickly set it up it's based uh in a small town in uh, oregon i think it is and uh uh what's his name spangler something spangler the one with the glasses the egon yeah, uh, spangler egon. with the glasses he uh He's had kids and stuff like that. His daughter is going through yeah. some tough times. Her house is repossessed. And then she, she's now uh, gone to his house because he's, he's passed away in the film. Uh, and uh, she yeah. sort of, I guess, inherits the house. It's, it's a farm. It's desolate. It's not worth that much. But she's got nowhere else to go. That's what takes them to that house. Uh, mm -hmm. Carrie Coon plays the mum. Carrie Coon, we've heard her voice, uh, Proxima Midnight, I think she was, in... Infinity War, that that, oh. that that woman, that kind of uh, yeah, she was yes. popped in the midnight. She's been in uh, in a bunch of leftovers, leftovers. And, uh, yeah, a Fargo TV show. Paul Paul Rudd, the most sexiest man in the world. Don't know where that came from. Uh, he's been where voted that come from, from magazine yeah. sexiest man in the world, Pff, mate. Crazy. Uh, he's also in the film as well. Yeah. He plays a, he plays a teacher. Finn Wolfhard is in the film. Uh, Stranger, things. Stranger Things, and the, the kids in the film, do you know what, are really good, I'm not going to lie, the kids in the film are really good, one of the, one of the kids of Carrie Coon, she's a daughter, she's a clever one, she's almost like a carbon copy of Egon Spangler, she believes in all that kind of, right, but right, she doesn't okay. believe in ghosts, but she's very scientific, very, very scientific, very clever, but yeah, it's directed by Jason Reitman, as we know, who's the son of, uh, he's the son of the person that played, uh, Spangler uh, in Spangler. real life, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Ivan, Ivan, uh, or Ivan, Ivan Reitman, he, Ivan Reitman directed okay, the oh, first there you one. Go. Sorry, okay, there you go, yeah, the son of the director, yeah, yeah, so it's literally, you know, this person, this uh, uh, Jason Reitman, he captures the, the new, so the, most of the film feels like Stranger Things, because the kids are doing most of the driving, oh, they're okay. finding things out, they're all kids, and they're trying to find out if this is real, that's real, they, they start seeing ghosts and all that kind of stuff. They find the Ghostbuster kit and all kinds of shit. They're the ones that drive it. And then Paul Rudd's character kind of is with them in a way, sort of thing. Okay. Uh, but yeah, they, he blends the new and he blends the old very well. Uh, like I said, there's the, the certain things about this film I can't, I can't say because it will spoil it. Hmm. Mate. Okay. Uh, overall. So when you say yeah, the old. That's the thing. Yeah. When you say the old, does that mean? Yeah. So okay. I mean, what's her name? Uh, is it Olivia Munn? Is that her name? Olivia, Olivia Munn. Munn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's in is, it as well. Is it her? Oh man, she's in the film. She's like she's the baddie. Olivia oh, Munn is what is right, the baddie? Okay. I think it's her. I'm never getting the wrong, but she's the, in Ghostbusters too. There's like a lady who's like an evil kind of ghost kind of person, and she looks very like David Bowie-ish and whatever in her suit. Uh, eyes are all you know, but yeah, th there's, yeah. a, there's a version of that same that same ghost is in this the same baddie. Oh, and I think, it's a, I, think it's, I think she's played okay. by Olivia Munn, unless I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, so the old, yeah, so the, the blend the new and the old, the old you're gonna love. The old you're gonna oh, love. Okay. I'm not gonna say what it is, I don't want to spoil it for people, but it's a fun film, it's not a great film, sure, it's sure. just it's okay. just like the old, old Ghostbusters. There's certain things that they put into this yeah, that you yeah. think, oh. This is this is old school. This is old school. Okay. I ain't saying anymore. If you watch it, uh, it's fun. You'll get it. There's two post-credit scenes. You stay for both of them. They do a Marvel. Yep. Don't see leave till the cleaners come. They're doing come. a Marvel. And Damn. those post-credit scenes. So are that means that very, there's um... very good. So the... Yes. Is it? So what? So there's definitely going to be a yes, another part so. then. Yeah, but the post-credit scenes are very yeah, good. They go. Very good. Yeah. Uh, that's all I'm going to say that's it and we love that we love it it kind of how these very post credit good. scenes um, yes they set up right. like new very very nostalgic new you will love it you will love it I was like wow they got anyway yeah I'm not saying too... I don't want to spoil it for people that ain't seen it because for me because I didn't know anything about it it made it better for me so that's yeah. what I'm saying Ghostbusters okay. Half Life is, what, is right. worth a watch Okay. All right, that's nice. Um, and listen, look, we've got time yes. for a hidden gem, Deval. Quick hidden gem. This one's called Click Goes the Landmine. Uh, no, sorry, Landmine Goes Click. 2015, okay. I found it on Rakuten. Uh, so if you win that prize of the Disney Plus 
uh, giveaway. I'll also throw in the Rakuten code so you can watch this movie as well. That's right. Oh, Prizes galore. So this movie is, I'm going to set it up really quickly. I'm not going to spoil it for you. But it's about a three, three people. Uh, they go to the sort of the wilderness in Georgia, in Europe, backpacking. And uh, there's one woman, two men. Uh, one of the people steps on a landmine randomly, steps on a landmine, oh gosh. and he can't move. He can't move. <laughs> Literally, he cannot Shit. move because if he moves, boom. And um, that is just the beginning of the madness that happens. And you realize that it happened for a reason. It wasn't an accident. <laughs> it wasn't an accident. When I started watching this film, I thought, oh, what is this? The film seems a bit, I don't know, it seemed the, the quality didn't seem that great. The acting didn't seem that great. Yeah. And I almost stopped watching it. And I'm so glad I didn't because the film goes down That's a good. mad direction. And mad. Sometimes you hear about these is murder it? stories and crime stories and you think, shit, what happened? This kind of gives you an idea of how mad some people can be and the things that we don't hear reported in the news. It's crazy. Yeah. But I'm so glad I didn't stop this film because right until the end, certain things happen. And even right at the very end, something happens. And I'm like, shit. I was left <laughs> speechless. I was like, shit, did that just happen? Did that just happen? And the way um... they, even the way they captured the end of the movie, it was such a good ending. You got to stick. You got to stick I mean, with it to the, the end. The, it's such a good ending. It's crazy. When you when you go online and you type it in landmine goes click and you see the picture, you're like, shit. This doesn't film. like it's looks like it's film. not going to end it's, well. It's, it's all over the place film, but it's mad. Worth a watch. That's all I'm saying. Hidden gem. Go see it. Yeah, yeah. hidden gem. Mad, mad. There you go. Listen, you've heard it from mm. the Flicksters. Um, we love bringing you these hidden gems and. This is a movie that you're not just going to catch on the nope. cinema or, or whatever. This is like hidden. Yep. Um, but if you invest in the time, then you know what? You, you'll enjoy yourself. All right, listen, look, folks, that's all we've got time for. That is the end of episode 165. Yep. Remember, keep it locked with the Flicksters. We've got loads more stuff to kind of bring for you. And mm. um, yeah, we just hope you enjoy the show. Let us know what you think and uh, keep it locked Definitely. with us. So um, right. that's Peace it. Out. All right. Okay. So listen, folks, we're back again. And remember, I just want to kind of put this out there. Uh, people can watch this episode on YouTube. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Just pop in the Flicksters podcast.